Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another Saturday workout. Today we're gonna focus on strength. We have four exercises for you, very unique exercises. You may have seen us do them before. Um, we're going to start with a core exercise, a shoulder stability exercise. I'm gonna have Taylor demonstrate for you all four so I can just relax and, you know, chill out. Okay, so we're gonna start in a high plank. A high plank means that you are on your hands, right? A low plank would mean that you're on your forearms. That's how we distinguish between the two, right? So I'm gonna talk extra, so Taylor just has to stay in this high plank for longer. <laughs> um, so what Taylor is going to do, before she does anything, right, she's gonna make sure that her hands are directly stacked under her shoulders, her feet are hip width apart. The narrower you are in a plank, the more challenging the movement is going to be, right? Because you're not, your weight is not dispersed any longer. So definitely to start, feet are behind, right stacked under her hips. Her glutes are flexed, right? So if I push her, she's not gonna go anywhere, right? She's engaged, she's firm, she's, she's a rock, right? So plank clockworks is what I like to call this. It's a good shoulder stability drill and obviously lots of core work. So what Taylor's gonna start by doing is taking her right hand and lifting forward to the 12 o'clock position on the clock. She'll then go lateral to the three o'clock position on the clock, coming back to center every time. And then the last one would be six o'clock on the clock, coming back to center. She'll then do her left, pulling forward, putting pressure on the hands. A common mistake people make in a movement like this is they do go too quickly, right? They're scared of lifting, so they kind of jolt their arm and come back to center. Take your time, right? If you're finding that this is very challenging, go to your knees, right? So Taylor's dropping her knees to the floor. She's still keeping her pelvis forward, right? She's not letting her hips rock back keeping her glutes tight, her abs are braced as if I was gonna get her in the gut. And then she's once again, pulling forward with her weight, pulling lateral with her weight, and pulling back with her weight. Now, if you're sitting there saying, well, I don't have any shoulder issues, I don't need shoulder stability. No, we all need shoulder stability. Um, so it's a great movement for anyone, whether you have shoulder issues or you don't, right? We all want stable shoulders. It's a complex joint. It gets injured easily. So the more, the sturdier they are, the better, right? How's that feel, Taylor? Where do you feel it? Yeah, so she's feeling her core, right? Because, because of the lifting of the arms, her core is having to work a lot harder, right? One more thing I wanna mention, go back up to the high plank. So one thing I didn't talk about was here, right? So when you lift a hand off the ground, your immediate instinct is to pull the weight away from that side of the body, right, to help yourself. That's what we don't want to do. So what she's gonna do before she lifts that hand is dig both feet evenly as she can into the ground and really flex her butt hard, as as she can as she's lifting. Now, is it gonna be perfect? No, it's not gonna be perfect, but that's what makes us better, right, is practice. So go ahead and relax. You starting to sweat yet? A little bit. <laughs> okay, awesome. So what we're gonna do now is a posterior step down. So we're gonna get rid of our mat. Um, also for repetitions on something like that, I'd start with maybe five clocks on right, five clocks on left. Relax, reset, and repeat three times, three to four times. Now, obviously, the more proficient you get, you can increase your repetition or increase the challenge um, by lifting your knees off the ground if you're starting. Um, but one thing to keep in mind always is speed does not mean you're better at something, right? That is not a quick exercise. Stay slow and controlled. All right, so posterior step downs, exercise number two. I just used this last Monday on our Instagram page for our movement. Um, drill. So what Taylor's going to do is start loaded on the bench. So both legs are on the bench. She's going to just slowly drop her left leg down, almost scraping the bench or the object that she's using. So she's keeping her left leg as close as she can. She's going to tap the ground. You see that control, right? It's beautiful. One thing I always say to clients is there's an egg on the ground below that left toe. Do not break the egg, right? Because the instinct is to just drop the weight. Really good, right? So if you're looking to grow some quads like mine or Taylor's, this is a really good quad exercise, right? <laughs> um, although Roger's quads are stronger than our both, his are not as large, right? That's just genetics for you. Um, and male versus female, I think. Um, so Taylor, where are you feeling this? Quad. Quad, right? Um, we're also doing a ton of balance, right? So because of that bench, so whether you're gonna use your ottoman or a kitchen count, kitchen chair, excuse me, don't use the kitchen counter, um, or, or even a step in your house, right? The elevation is going to make it more difficult, obviously. Choose a lower object. I think at one of my clients, Andrea, when I first, she has a lot of knee issues, when I first started teaching her this exercise, I had her doing it off the edge of a plate. So what, plates are like this thick maybe? That's where I started her, right? So it's, it's regressional and lots and lots of variety going on here. Um, 
obviously the higher you're getting, you're challenging the balance of the, the person quite a bit more. Are you getting fatigued up there? Oh yeah, I'm feeling it. <laughs> so awesome quad exercise but, and awesome ba balance exercise, but also a very good knee stability exercise, right? So people deal with um, something called jumper's knee or um, patella, what am I trying to say? Paten patella tendonitis, thank you. We had a discussion about this beforehand, um, which is an overuse injury, right? So really great way of treating that. Um, we use this a lot in the gym. Excellent, last one, tapping and pulling, beautiful. One thing that I did not mention during that we should talk about is hip stability, right? What you don't want to do is when you're dropping off the box, you don't want that hip to drive up, right? Hip hiking is what you'd call it. So if, yeah, you're feeling she's let it, letting her left hip kind of drop before, like people do that when they're nervous, right? They're like, oh, I don't want to fall. So um, really brace your abs and do your best to keep your hips level with each other, right? Because what happens is when you're hiking, you're putting a lot more compression on the lumbar, right? Working those, working those muscles in a way they might not be happy working. Um, okay, so let's move on. Repetitions on something like that five to 15, right? We can really vary something like that. The lower the object, you can do higher repetitions. Um, if you do have knee pain, start with lower repetitions. And, or if you've been diagnosed with a jumper's knee, start with lower repetitions so you're not, once again, overusing, overusing the area that's already bothering you. Um, yeah, sound good? All right, what we're gonna do is now pull our other bench in. Um, so you're like, well, I don't have two benches, right? But you do have a couch, you do have a dining room chair, you do have an ottoman, you do have a couch, things like that. So I think this is definitely something possible that you can do at home. You just might have to think a little bit. Or a coffee table and a couch is actually perfect. All right, so we're gonna start with a Chinese plank. Don't ask me what it's called, why it's called that, because I don't know. Same reason why I don't know why the Bulgarian split squad is called that, other than maybe it was created in that country. Okay, so. Chinese plank, right? Weird, what are you doing right now? So Taylor has her feet uh, hip width apart on the bench, dug into the bench. Now, the big mistake people make on this is they wanna push into the object, right? In front of it, no. You're pushing down into the object to activate the hamstring. The hamstring is gonna work a lot harder when you're digging down into it like that. Her main priority is to flex her butt as hard as she can. Imagine this like an upside down plank, right? It's a plank, it's just working the opposite side of the body, right? So she's extending her arms as far away from she, her as she can. She's literally engaging the majority of her posterior muscles right now, whether she likes it or not. So she's using her lumbar, her glutes, her hamstrings, her calves a little bit. Anywhere else you're feeling it that I didn't mention? Yeah, abs. She's feeling her abs, right? Which makes sense, it's a plank, right? <laughs> I would recommend s supporting your head on something like this, right? Because when you're, when you're down like that, your neck's probably not used to that. Now, if you have a weak neck and you know that, you've been diagnosed with that from a physical therapist or a doctor, then extend yourself off the edge of the bench, work your neck, right? That's the only way we can make things stronger is by strengthening them. Um, but I would recommend keeping your chin tucked, right? Keep yourself engaged and sturdy. Repetition, <laughs> you can relax, Taylor. <laughs> Repetition on something like that, 30 seconds to a minute, same as I would coach for a regular beginner plank, right? The way you'd increase the challenge on something like that is by lifting single legs, just like in a regular plank, right? You might lift one leg off the ground in a regular plank to challenge your stability, right? Woo! Now her left hamstring is screaming at her, her left glute is screaming at her, and her abs are having to now balance out all that work, right? Feel good? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and relax. All right, last one. I really like this exercise. I don't use it enough on myself or my clients, I think just because of the overall setup of it. But um, like I said, if you're already in this setup, couch and coffee table, perfect work. I'm gonna move it slightly closer to her. Beautiful. So what she's going to do is when we teach an elevated hip thrust, we use the bra strap um, setup a lot. So you know, for all you men out there that wear bras, it's gonna be really easy for you to figure out. You're going to Shimmy down on the bench, right? She's putting her bra strap on the edge of the object. So whether it's your couch, um, if you're using a hard object, pad the object, right? Because you don't want to be distracted the whole movement by something digging into your spine, right? Um, cueing is very similar for this, the hip thrust where your feet are on the floor, meaning your eyes are forward, right? She's keeping her spine nice and neutral. She's not going to let herself push through, um, push through her hips to begin. So feet are dug into the object, right? She's going to elevate one leg in the air and she's gonna squeeze her right glute until she's fully hip extended all the way up. 
Yep, and Taylor definitely has tight hips, so she's working for that extension at the top, right? So what, go ahead and show them what it looks like not to fully extend your hip. Good, so see how she's kind of lack there? She's kind of loose right there. You really want to squeeze, lock out the hip as high as you can to make sure that posterior side of that body is really engaging, right? I stay forward, people. I've coached people for years and they're all like this. Am I doing it right? No, you're not doing it right. Look ahead. How many times have I told you, right? Keep your eyes forward. You're not looking up. You're looking forward. Um, really crucial cue right there. Um, now she switched to her left so you can see the difference. Now people always say, where do I keep this leg? She can keep it there or she can also cross it across the other leg if it's more comfortable for the person, right? Um, we always start just tucked up. If we have issues, then we'll switch the client. Now a regression of this movement, go ahead and put your feet down. A regression of this movement would be double legs up on the bench and slightly closer, right? So if you're finding the challenge is extreme, bring the object a little close to you, dig your feet into it and flex your abs, flex your glutes, eyes are forward. Really good. How's that feel? Where do you feel it? Yeah. Butt, upper hamstrings, abs, right? Can't beat all those spots. Those are really good working locations. I think actually all of our movements today got a ton of posterior chain, which to me is a success, especially with body weight movements. A lot of times we do too much pressing in body weight movements, too much shoulder loading. So the only shoulder loading we did today was that plank clock, and then we really um, attacked that posterior um, side of the body, including that quad actually also. Um, Awesome work. Something like that, if you're gonna do the singles, maybe 10 to 15 each side, repeating two to three rounds. Doubles, if you could aim for 15, same idea, two to three rounds. Um, so we have the plank clock work, right? We have the posterior step downs, we have the Chinese plank, and the single leg elevated hip thrust. How was it? Good, I'm yeah? sweating. <laughs> She's sweating a little, right? That's a perfect way to start off your Saturday, right? Remember, exercise doesn't always have to be an hour long. You can take 10 minutes, get a good little movement prep in, activate some good muscles, go for a walk, hang out with your family and friends, and feel satisfied with it, right? Okay, thank you so much. We'll see you again next week. Please leave comments if you have any. And if you find any men for Taylor, let us know. We're still waiting. <laughs>